Hello, welcome to part three of auto scaling containers with Keda on Azure Kubernetes service. My name is Nilesh and let's see what we have covered so far in part one and part two of this series. In part one, we focused on provisioning Azure Kubernetes service cluster or AKS cluster by using a PowerShell script and also verified the development environment. In part two, we focused on installing the prerequisites like RabbitMQ, a containerized version of the RabbitMQ on AKS cluster. We package the .NET Core application into Docker containers and push these images onto Docker Hub. And finally deployed the application related containers onto the AKS cluster. We also did a bit of manual scaling to see how does it impact when the load on the RabbitMQ is high and there are not enough number of consumers to consume the messages. This is part three and we will talk about Keda. We will look at the Keda architecture. We will install Keda on the AKS cluster and then we will focus our energy on looking at the auto scaling features of Keda. So let's quickly review the demo app that we have been using. So we deployed the AKS cluster and there is a .NET Core consumer and the producer. So the producer produces a configurable number of messages onto a rabbit MQ and these messages are consumed by the consumer in a batch, which is again a configurable number. So we looked at the scaling last time by doing manual scaling. So let's look at some of the problems we faced at the time of scaling those consumers. So the scaling is totally dependent on the individual. So I've taken a screenshot of my previous installment or deployment and you can look here the number of pods which are running for the consumer. So in the last video, I had scaled this to 10 instances and all of these can be seen running here and they've been running for four hours. So the problem here is even though there are no messages to be consumed, there are 10 instances of the consumer running and still waiting for messages to consume. So, and this can lead to a lot of unutilized resources. So this is totally dependent on the individual's judgment when to scale up and scale down. So in this case, I forgot to scale down and those many resources were consumed on my AKS cluster. So how can we overcome this problem? One of the option is to use a matrix related to some sort of utilization. And one feature which Kubernetes provides is horizontal pod autoscaler or HPA. The way HPA works is in terms of scaling, we define a sort of matrix to be allocated or assigned for the purpose of scaling. So in this case, I can scale my deployment related to RabbitMQ deployment, the consumer deployment based on CPU percentage. And I can say when the CPU percentage is above 50%, that means the load on this particular consumer is higher and I can specify a range uh, like a minimum and maximum within which this particular deployment would be scaled and we will have those many number of pods running. So the advantage of this approach is we have uh, automatic scaling based on some sort of matrix. In this example, it is based on CPU utilization. We could also use some custom matrix which are provided by the Kubernetes API or the Kubernetes matrix server. The cons of this is some objects like daemon sets cannot be scaled. So daemon set is like a daemon running on the Kubernetes cluster. It's a pod which uh, runs in uh, daemon mode. This cannot be scaled using the horizontal pod autoscaler. And the other con is this is limited to the number of resources available on the cluster. So even if I say the max size is 10 in this case and assume that eight pods have been scheduled and it consumes all the CPU and the RAM available on that particular cluster, then it cannot scale beyond those eight instances. So let's look at some of the other alternatives to handle these limitations. Uh, one of the solution available is uh, what is called as Keda. It's a project which is uh, Kubernetes based event driven auto scaling. It's a CNCF uh, cloud native computing foundation sandbox project currently. And what Keda tries to do is 
to address the problem of auto scaling based on events and uh, not all workloads are related to the CPU based loads. So let's say we are building event driven solution where one of the source for our application is uh, coming via sort of events. So uh, let's say events are populated on the RabbitMQ or we have a Kafka messaging infrastructure where there could be a spike in the number of requests coming in. So for these kind of workloads, we cannot base scaling purely on the CPU or RAM utilization because the spikes could be very high during a particular time of the day and it could go very low for the rest of the day. So what Kubernetes based event driven scaling tries to do is to look at the source of the events and try to scale the objects based on the event source. So let's look at some of the prerequisites which are required for Keda. In order to install Keda, Keda works purely with Kubernetes based cluster. So we need a Kubernetes cluster somewhere. It could be on premise or it could be on one of the cloud providers. And then for installation, we could use the package manager Helm, which we had used last time in the previous demo for installing RabbitMQ. So it can be used for installation of Keda as well. There is another approach which is to use operator. So operators are again similar to the charts, but they have a slightly different mechanism of installing the objects or the services on Kubernetes clusters. Uh, if we don't want to use Helm charts or the operators, the third option is to do a manual install. So to install manually, we can go to the Keda core repo and uh, in the Keda core repository, there are YAML files and we can run the custom object definitions which are provided by Keda core manually onto the Kubernetes cluster. So I'll be using Helm in this demo. So to start with Helm, we have to add the uh, Keda core repository into our Helm repo. This is done by running the command shown here and we update the Helm. And then in order to install uh, Keda, we run the Helm install Keda command. Uh, this and uh, many other instructions related to the deployment of Keda can be found on the link here on Keda docs. So uh, let's look at the quick architecture of Keda. How does it fit in? So if we look at uh, this middle part here, which is Keda, Keda provides a matrix adapter controller and what is called as a scaler. It registers with the existing Kubernetes store and it creates a horizontal pod auto scaler behind the scenes. It registers with the event source and it looks at the number of events which are available to be processed and taking this and the existing number of consumers or the processors for this event source, Keda would be able to uh, horizontally sco uh, scale the pods. So uh, let's look at the installation and auto scaling of Keda in the demo part. So let's look at the state of the Kubernetes cluster, kubectl get kubectl get all. This will get us the default objects or default namespace what is deployed. This is in the state where we left last time. So we have a RabbitMQ pod deployed. There is one consumer pod deployed and two for the producers and then there are services which are in the default namespace. So let's look at if there is anything in the uh, system namespace. Just to verify that we do not have any object related to the uh, Keda. So all namespaces. And in this we can see similar objects like all the default ones then cube system related uh, namespace and the objects deployed in that. So we do not find any object related to the Keda uh, infrastructure or any custom resource related to Keda at this point. So let's go and deploy Keda using the PowerShell script. So in this PowerShell scripts folder, I have one script for deploying Keda, deploy Keda.ps. So let's go and deploy this. And while the deployment happens, let me just go and show you what is the content of this PowerShell script. So if everything is fine, 
uh, KEDA should be installed and uh, here we can see that it has been installed correctly. So in the deploy KEDA scripts, uh, it's adding the repo for KEDA from GitHub, KEDA core project doing the update of Helm repo and then creates a namespace called KEDA in which namespace we are going to deploy all the objects required for KEDA using the Helm chart installation. So now let's go and look at what all objects have been created in the KEDA namespace. So I provide the namespace filter here and specify that I want all the objects from KEDA. So we can see that a KEDA operator has been deployed uh, just about 45 seconds back. There is a service for matrix and the API server and there is a deployment which is done and uh, there are replicas as well for the API server. So if uh, this is working fine, we should also have the custom objects or custom resource definitions provided by uh, KEDA. So we can say kubectl get custom resource definition CRD and let's provide the namespace as KEDA. Again, sorry about these typos. So if everything is fine, now we see that two custom objects uh, definitions have been, custom resource definitions has been populated by the installation of KEDA. One is called the scale object and the other one is called the trigger authentication. So now uh, since KEDA is installed, we have all the prerequisites installed on the cluster. And let's go and see what we need to deploy our auto scaler, which is using this KEDA features. So for auto scaling, I have defined a auto scaler or scaled object for my RabbitMQ consumer, which is the object which I'm trying to scale using KEDA. So this is deployed using a deployment name, RabbitMQ consumer deployment. And in the KEDA definition or KEDA spec for scaled object, I specify the target for that in the deployment name. So this has to exactly match the name of the deployment. And then I provide some additional properties here in terms of the polling interval. This is for how long or uh, it's the interval uh, between which the KEDA should do polling of the source. Cooldown period is when the scaling should start down and uh, when the object or when the pod has finished processing and how long it should wait before it starts to scale down. Minimum replica is the count. Default is zero, but I would like to customize this and keep the minimum replica as one. And maximum replica, the default is 100, but I would like to limit this to 30 in my case. Then we specify the triggers and triggers are the kind of uh, the objects where KEDA scale object will look at. So triggers are our source, uh, event source. In this case, I'm specifying the type as RabbitMQ trigger and I provide the metadata for RabbitMQ trigger. This involves queue name and queue length. So queue name is the name of the queue, which I want to monitor. Queue length is the number of messages, which I want to specify if there are, let's say five messages. And if there are not enough number of consumers or not enough number of pods to process these five messages, it should start scaling up and then there is the authentication reference. So when we connect to the RabbitMQ queue, it requires the connection string. And this is provided by means of creating a secret in Kubernetes cluster with the name secret RabbitMQ host connection. And the data that it consists is the host in this format. But this, instead of passing it in the clear text, we are converting it into a base64 encoded string and storing it in a variable named RabbitMQ connection string. And this is linked using what is called as a custom object named trigger authentication. So this is provided by KEDA API v1.1 uh, or v1 alpha 1. So we are targeting a secret target reference parameter named host and 
the name of this is coming from this secret name which is matching the name and the value is rabbitmq connection string so that is this value the key name and what it is targeting is the host name here in this triggers so once we have set up this particular scaled object this is the link between our rabbitmq source and the deployment which is the consumer so let's deploy this and look at the impact of this on our scaling features so to start with i will uh, first deploy this particular uh, three objects which are defined in these manifest files the secret the scaled object definition and the trigger authentication trigger using another powershell script so for deploying this i have a script named deploy autoscaler so let's go and trigger this deployment and while the deployment is getting triggered i will also split the screen to show how uh, the pods and the deployment start scaling so let's just zoom this a little bit and let's put the pods here and we will watch the pods as they scale so kubectl let's say get pods and the watch command so we will watch all the pods right now there are only four pods running from our default installation or from where we left last time and for the deployment let's do the same kubectl get deploy and watch the deployment so right now we have two deployments uh, one is for the consumer one is for the producer and we have deployed the auto scaler so how does the auto scaling trigger so let's see what objects have been deployed correctly into the cluster or not kubectl get all and now we can see here that uh, there is the horizontal pod autoscaler which has been deployed by keda as part of the scaled object and it's waiting for the trigger to happen so to trigger this we go and populate some messages so let's say we want to start with 2000 messages the status is 200 so we should have sorry uh, yes uh, when this is 200 means the message was success and let's go and see on the rabbitmq management ui we can see that there are 2000 messages which are populated on the rabbitmq and there is one consumer which is running which has picked up these 50 messages so after five seconds we should see the auto scaling triggered in because we have said that monitor the rabbitmq queue for five seconds and if there are messages to be processed you start scaling so here on the right hand side we see that the deployment has gone from 1 to 4 it started with 2 from 2 it went to 4 4 to 8 16 and uh, it's increasing because there are still messages to be processed and as the number of deployments here starts increasing we also see the pods here getting created so there are pods which are getting scheduled and they transition from the creating stage to pending from pending to running so at this point of time we have uh, 24 pods ready out of 30 which are provisioned and in a short while we should have all the 30 pods running so if we go back to the browser and start looking at the consumption of these messages so we can see there are 27 consumers which have come up so far and there are 1500 messages which have been picked up from that rabbitmq So this is a quick overview of how the scaling happens based on the number of messages. So as and when these messages get processed, since there are 30 consumers up and running now, uh, 30 into the size of our batch is 50. So 1500 messages will be processed every second in this case, or that batch is worth 1500. And soon we should see this number coming down drastically and it should go down to zero and once the messages go down to zero there are no longer messages to be processed 
the scaling down would start to kick in and we should see from this 30 uh, the number of pods going down and it should stop at 1 since we said in our configuration that we want the scaled object to have minimum replica of 1 running. So in terms of scaling we do not want to scale down to 0 we want to keep one instance of the pod running all the time. So there is still processing happening and let's wait and see when this drops down to 1. Uh, one thing you can see here is uh, this time is shown as 21 minutes that's when uh, 21 minutes before the deployment for the consumer was done on this particular cluster and since we haven't made any change to the deployment definition this number remains the same across any number of deployments which have scaled but in terms of the pods you can see that the time for the pods is varying because the pods they are uh, created in real time and uh, this pod definition is what is used or the spec in this deployment is what is used to create the pod so as and when the pod gets scheduled and it gets up and running we will see a difference in the time here so let's go back once again to the RabbitMQ and now there are no longer any messages to be processed all the messages have been acknowledged and we still have the 30 consumers running in a short while we should see this number drop down from 30 to 1 because of the scaled down feature of this auto scaled GitHub. up so while this is scaling down uh, let me show you another feature of Keda which is what is the impact if we remove the Keda part so uh, we saw that the application was running initially there was only one consumer and we added the uh, scaled object for the Keda and it automatically scaled from 1 to 30 and in a short while it should scale down from 30 to 1 and if I want to delete this Keda installation or these objects I can use the kubectl command and I can delete those but in the meantime let's also see what's happening on the horizontal pod autoscaler here the HPA which is created so let's find that object kubectl get horizontal pod autoscaler and we can see that uh, there is one horizontal pod autoscaler which was created by the uh, KEDA and minimum pods for this is specified as 1 and maximum is 30 so this is what it created based on our definition of the scale object so here we specified the minimum and maximum and that is what KEDA took into account while creating this HPA so uh, we should now see this trigger going down and soon these 30 replicas 30 deployments for the consumer should get down to one so once that is done I will show how we can uh, delete the files which are deployed taking a bit of time yes and now we can see that it has triggered the scale down and from 30 we have come down to 1 and on the left pane here we can see that all the pods have started terminating so how do I uh, get away from this auto scaling if I want to delete those so let me go into the folder where these uh, manifest files are residing so these are in k8s folder and under that we have the auto scaled consumer this has the definition for three files so let me go and apply this command kubectl delete so i will use the delete feature it's like we created uh, the objects using create or apply command in the previous demo or previous video I will use the delete command this time from the kubectl 
and gave the list of files so i'm recursively looping through this particular folder and applying the delete function and let's specify the short form so you can see that the secret the scaled object and the trigger authentication all three have been deleted now what would happen if i was to populate the messages again here so for simplicity let's keep only 200 messages instead of 2000 and let's trigger this so this is successful now if we go into the rabbitmq ui we should see there are 200 messages here and there is one consumer running so it should pick the 50 messages so what this demonstrates is even if we delete the scaled object references it does not have any impact on the application which you are running the application related producer and the consumer they work independently and as such kida does not impact the existing application it only enhances the application by providing that scaled object and if we do not want to use the scaling feature at certain point of time we can delete the objects related to auto scaling and the application will still continue to work as expected but just that it won't do auto scaling in this case so let's go back to the presentation and see where we had left before we continue from there so we looked at the uh, installation of keda and how the scaled object definition impacts and the auto scaling so we specify the kind as scaled object and this definition is coming from the api version of keda v1 alpha 1 deployment name is the main feature which is linking this auto scaled object or scaled object to the deployment which we want to auto scale and then it's the trigger so in our case we are using rabbitmq as the trigger along with all this metadata for connecting to the rabbitmq so let's look at the features of keda uh, which enables these auto scaling so keda is event driven we are looking at specifically sources which are related to eventing or mainly uh, they support event driven application development it makes auto scaling simple it has built-in scalers so in the next screen we will see what are the scalers by default keda supports uh, it can support multiple workload types like we saw deployment but apart from deployment we can also scale jobs so jobs are another type of object provided by kubernetes uh, keda is vendor agnostic so it does not uh, link itself to a specific vendor as long as there is a kubernetes cluster available and we can deploy the keda objects onto that it would work fine and it also supports azure functions so let's look at uh, some of the event sources and scalers provided by default as part of the current keda project so on the azure side of things it supports azure event hub azure service bus topics and queues storage blob azure storage uh, queues azure monitor and azure functions when it comes to open source projects or messaging infrastructures it supports apache kafka prometheus rabbitmq redis nats Lickless. in terms of other public cloud offerings it has support for aws cloudwatch kinesis simple queue service and on the google cloud for pubsub and the others it also supports some external uh, scalers there is huawei cloud i mysql and postgres databases are also supported so you can see that uh, these number of uh, scalers they are increasing day by day and uh, this is not limited to only these scalers there are also other scalers in the pipeline so uh, that brings me to the end of this demo and this video let's summarize what did we look at in this particular video we looked at manual scaling and understood the limitations of scaling manually different types of objects on kubernetes then we looked at horizontal pod autoscaler which provides a way for doing scaling based on a matrix like cpu then we looked at the keda project kubernetes based event driven auto scaling we deployed keda on the kubernetes cluster using helm chart with the help of deploy keda powershell script 
we deployed the custom resources for autoscaler using deploy autoscaler powershell script and then we autoscaled rabbitmq consumer deployment so the specific files or the manifest files related to autoscaled consumer are available in the github repo at this location under the k8s folder for references uh, we can look at the keda site which is having good amount of resources in terms of the project where it stands currently how we can deploy what are the uh, what is the architecture what are the scalers supported and uh, some blog material for keda related resources then there is uh, ms learn aks workshop so uh, this one is specific to Azure Kubernetes service and it covers things like uh, creating the cluster, choosing the right deployment model for pod, uh, implementing security, monitoring and scaling the application. And there is also a talk by Jeff Holland at the KubeCon North America 2019 on Keda specifically. So I hope that these resources are helpful in your own learning if you're interested in learning and trying out Keda. If you want to connect with me on any of these social media sites, these are the links you can refer to. And uh, with that, I conclude this presentation. Thank you. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you like it, please hit the like button, share it with your friends if you find it useful and subscribe to the channel. Thanks once again.